Welcome to r slash today I effed up where a guy accidentally destroys a marriage. Happened an hour ago on lunch, so a real today I effed up for you guys. On Wednesday, our department head takes everyone out for a long lunch. It's a special time we all look forward to in our boring 45 hour work week. It's normal to carpool all together and naturally I drive my two friend coworkers each time. However, this week we have a new hire just out of grad school, we'll call her Sarah. She's quickly picking up the pace with the rest of the office and settling in nicely. While everyone is leaving the office for lunch, I offer her a ride in my car with the other two and she agrees and hops in the passenger seat. Now here's where the first F up happens. While on the way to the restaurant, Sarah is picking up on the group dynamic and tagging in on some good banter. Everything is going smooth, and then, while crossing into an intersection, the car in front of us gets swiped by someone who thought they could make the right turn in time. Traffic comes to a halt, and I slam on the brakes, and in doing so, reach out to my right to stop her from flying forward. I check to see we're all good, and everyone is okay, while realizing I am currently full on honking Sarah's right knocker. My words start to trail off. Dang, I hope everyone is okay. That kind of sentence that time slows down in, yeah. Amazingly, she laughs it off and says not to worry about it, that I was just reacting to the situation. For the next few minutes, the car was silent until Sarah said, that's funny, I haven't had that much action in a while. Which eased the mood and the car all laughed. And F up number two comes from my stupid self saying, Ah well, we all have our dry spells. Something I thought was innocent enough, but still playing along with the banter we all had going earlier. She goes quiet, and the rest of the car starts chatting again. We get to lunch, and everything seems okay, but Sarah is a little off and not as bright or talkative as she was in the morning, so I ask what's up. She told me she was a little uneasy at my comment in the car. I instantly apologized, saying I had no reason to talk about her sexuality in her private life and that I was sorry. She said she didn't care about that and that it was fine. It's just that it reminded her of the anniversary of her husband's death coming up next month. My heart sunk. I had completely forgotten about her husband. I felt so bad, I instantly started apologizing for everything in the world. I felt horrible. My friend overheard this and just was white in the face. He seemed mortified to even watch this conversation. Sarah ended up going home early about 15 minutes ago, but stopped by my desk to tell me not to worry about anything from lunch. I feel so horrible that I've just been sitting here unproductive writing a Reddit post to cope with it. Please Reddit, help me feel a little better. Too long, didn't read. I yanked a widow's titty. <laughs> Of all the Reddit posts I've ever read, I think this is the best TLDR I've ever seen. Our next Reddit post is from Duck Fluff. About three weeks ago, I began preparations to get a nice gift from my boyfriend, who I'll call Ray, to celebrate four years of dating. We live in a terribly humid place, and all summer he's been complaining about how sweaty his butt and balls get whenever he goes outside. He's been buying the same brand of cotton boxer briefs since we started dating. I thought it would be a nice homage to our great relationship, a great way to take care of the butt I get to squeeze on the regular, to splurge on a male subscription service to some silky micromodal underwear. They're pricey, but known for being wicking, cooling, and overall very nice on the buns and balls. I ordered the first pair to present to him on the day of and set up for a pair to be delivered monthly thereafter. I used his email on the sign up so that I could simply pass on the account to him after the first pair came. That way, he'd have full power to pick his colors and style every month and easily return any if there were unexpected problems. One small problem. The receipt for this whole transaction is now resting in his email where he can find it and spoil my surprise. I sneakily hacked into his computer while he was out, by which I mean I entered the password he shared with me because he foolishly trusts me not to wreck his stuff, and opened up his email. I simply archived the existing emails and set it up so that the future emails from the company would be auto marked as read and archived as well. I know how to do this because I'm a brilliant hacker. I googled it. While carefully double checking my devious work just to ensure nothing slipped through the cracks, a new email pinged on arrival and caught my attention. 
a shipping confirmation for an engagement ring. I immediately noped off his computer, and of course, I didn't open the email, but the damage is done. Secrets out. My heart fell right through my butt, you guys. I actually died, and now I'm a ghost writing this. I probably should have pretended I never saw that and taken the secret to my grave, but I was too pumped and couldn't keep it in. Within the hour, I broke down and called Ray to sheepishly confess what I'd done. He wasn't angry, but sadly disappointed that I spoiled the surprise. Here's the kicker, he didn't actually propose yet and still intends to make a thing of it. My punishment for snooping <laughs> is that the suspense is killing me. I've been forbidden from telling anyone that we're getting engaged until it's officiated. Every time we go out, the suspense that this may be the night drives me crazy. A romantic date at the beach together evening ended with me saying, dang, I thought for sure we were getting engaged tonight. Why would you think I'm going to propose to you? He said. That sounds like something you wouldn't know about because I'd keep it secret in my personal email. Now, he started intermittently faking me out. The other day, he walked into the kitchen and presented me with a little hinge box, which turned out to contain a tie pin from his work. <laughs> he keeps getting down on one knee, looking up at me and saying, gotta tie this shoe. The emotional stress of keeping this exciting secret within me, not sharing it with coworkers or family or anyone is maddening. Every fall start sends my heart right back into my butt. <laughs> One more thing, I somehow screwed up the email setting. The shipping confirmation for the underwear didn't get archived on arrival, and he saw it within a few hours. So that surprise got spoiled too. Turns out I'm not a master hacker, and my attempts have only brought woe into this house. I guess it's not all bad. He reports that the pair of boxer briefs that arrived are very nice to wear, and I do indeed enjoy squeezing his buns in them. If we ever do actually get married, it'll be nice to be hitched to a guy with sweet, silky buns and balls. Our next Reddit post is from Dyslexia. This happened last summer. We're on a road trip from New Mexico to Mexico. We have a Honda Element converted for living in, so I crawl in the back to nap while he's driving. He stops at a gas station in the desert of Arizona, and while he's pumping, I get out to use the bathroom. Come back out, don't see him, and walk around the parking lot to have a look. I jokingly think to myself that maybe he drove off not knowing that I got out to use the restroom, but brush that off. I sit on a bench outside twiddling my thumbs, realizing this may now actually be the case. I reach for my phone to call him, but of course, my phone is in the car. I go back inside to ask the cashier to use their phone, but she says they don't have one. Obviously they do, but whatever. So I start asking random people in the store to use their phone, which makes people visibly uncomfortable because we're in the middle of nowhere and they think I'll steal it, I guess. I go back outside and continue asking strangers for their phone. I realize I don't know my boyfriend's number by heart, so I just call my phone repeatedly, hoping he'll answer. He doesn't. I use one person's phone to log into my Facebook to find my boyfriend's number, but alas, his phone is dead when I call. I resort to explaining to everyone whose phone I asked to use my situation. Some don't believe me, others feel really bad, and one man offered to buy me a hotel room for the night in the next town over, thinking that my boyfriend left me on purpose and I was just being modest. <laughs> it's been about two hours now. The store clerks through the windows have been looking at me suspiciously <laughs> for a while. I'm still sitting on the bench in the desert and have no idea what to do and start bawling my eyes out. A cop car pulls up and the officer comes to me and lets me know the store clerks called them because I've been loitering, haggling people for phones outside of their store and crying. I explain my situation and she's as confused and sympathetic as all the other people. She tells me I can't stay there so she can either take me to a truck rest stop in the town over or go to the police station. I ask her to take me to the rest stop, although she's not convinced that my boyfriend legitimately left me there on accident. We're driving down the highway when, on her radio, another cop says he's at the gas station and there's a guy there looking for his girlfriend. I just crack up and she does too, flips the car around and takes me back. And there, my boyfriend is standing outside of his car, banging on the windows and nearly crying because he couldn't believe he'd actually done that. 
He said he was passing some really cool scenery far into the drive and went to wake me up to see too when he realized I wasn't in the car. Flipped it around and drove faster than he's ever driven in his life to get back to the gas station. And that he wondered why so many people kept calling me but didn't feel comfortable answering my phone. He thought for sure that was the end of our relationship and the trip was ruined. What I can't get over is how the gas station employees managed to dial 911 without a phone. Hmm. Our next Reddit post is from Eat Broccoli, not Booty. So I sometimes drive for rideshare companies to make extra cash and keep me off the couch. I live in a touristy area that booms during summer months and vacation rental homes are common. So common that I sometimes do pickups and drop-offs at the same homes for different people week to week. And family slash friend groups of people renting the homes are the norm. One particular day, I dropped a guy off at a beautiful home near the beach that I had picked a guy up from just an hour or two prior. So as we arrive, I mentioned this to the writer. Hey, I just picked up one of your buddies from here about an hour ago. The writer says, no, must be the wrong house. Nope, he walked right out of that side door. I dropped him off at a local bar. His girlfriend is still in there though, she stayed behind. I had seen her kiss him goodbye at the door, but didn't mention this to the writer. You guys having a family friend vacation? This is a family owned home. It's been in my family for years and we don't rent it out. Nobody lives here but me and my wife and I've been in New York for work for the past four days. Awkward silence as we both come to the realization. He got out and I drove away, scolding myself for having such a big mouth. Dude, that's not a today I effed up. You're a hero. You're sparing that dude years, potentially decades of being cheated on. He was bound to find out eventually. Our next Reddit post is from Femboy Fatal. And if you can't already tell from the username, OP is a male. I know Reddit is going to give me a lot of hate for this. This morning, I was feeling super romantic and really wanted to hook up with a local guy to give him passionate kissing. So I got to talking with a guy and even though he was a lot older, like late 30s, mid 40s, he had a great bod and a great member. So I said what the heck and invited him to my hotel room. After 45 minutes to an hour of fun, I thought I'd never see this dude again because I'm flying home this afternoon, right now. Wrong. I went to the gate when they started boarding. Guess who was pre-boarding with his wife and children? You guessed it. To make matters worse, they're just a couple of rows from me and I can hear all their conversations. I'm in the plane right now and he keeps texting. I'm saving screenshots in case I need them in the future. I'm sitting here wondering how he was able to get away from his family that long. He was staying at the same hotel, which now just dawned on me because he made it to my room super fast. This is so uncomfortable. Edit, I'm male, the wife does not know. He texted me in the plane asking me to keep quiet and then also wanted to stay in touch and text me later because he now knows we live in the same city. And yes, you bet I saved that screenshot. Saved it on the phone, on the cloud, on emails to myself. <laughs> so I looked through Reddit for a post that went like, today I effed up by having a gay affair before I went on my flight, but unfortunately I couldn't find a post like that. Today I effed up by going to bed drunk. So last night I went out as I do every Saturday. When I got there, I met up with my friends and started the night with a couple of beers, but ended the night with a bit more than I could handle. After that, I went straight home and instantly fell asleep on the couch as I was trying to lay down on it just to rest for a moment. I woke up at around 5 today and my right arm felt a bit weird. It was cold and I couldn't move it at all. At first I didn't panic at all because this has happened to me before because I sometimes sleep with my arm under my head. However, today I slept with my arm under the side of my body. I've got a little over 100 kilograms or 220 pounds with my back against the backrest of the couch. After about 20 minutes of relaxing and massaging my arm with little to no signs of improvements, I woke up my parents. And after I explained my situation, my mom, who's a doctor, suggested we go to the hospital immediately. During my two hour stay at the hospital, the arm became significantly better as the time went on. However, my fingers and my wrist, not nearly as much as my fingers, but it still felt a bit off, movement were problematic. After getting some tests done on the arm nerves, which I hope I never do again, I waited for the results. 
A little over an hour passes and the doctor came back with the results. It appears that I've done damage to a nerve with my hip while I was asleep and will most likely never be able to fully contract my right hand fingers. I'm right handed. At first, the doctor didn't know how I managed to fall asleep in such an uncomfortable position, but after I told him what I've done the night before, he told me that this is a common thing, but that it usually doesn't end up this badly. Now I'm sitting at home writing this one-handed on my phone, contemplating life just because of two beers too much. Awesome OP, now I have a new fear to worry about every time I fall asleep. I'll file this one right underneath of accidentally swallowing a spider. That was r slash today I effed up, and unless you want to f up, you had better hit that subscribe button.